frankly, I find her fascinating. You say that with a straight face, like it's totally normal. Am I gonna have to beat some sense into you? Changed, and I think I like it. I'm happy to keep playing if you are. But if you think you're gonna beat me, you're crazy! Stop it! After death, most people go to either heaven or hell, but in rare cases, some people are transported to Quindechim. Appearing as a fancy bar, Quindechim is run by the Arbiter Deshim, who passes judgment on the deceased. Upon forcing guests to play deadly games, Deshim draws out the truth hidden in each person's heart, ultimately leaving the decision for their future. Episode 1. Welcome to Death Parade where we are introduced to a man and a woman who are unsure of their current situation. As they look down the hallway in the unknown place, they realize it's super nice. Eventually, they find a bar at the end of it all and are welcomed to a place called Quindachim. The bartender introduces himself as Desim, and he asks them a couple questions. First, he wants to know whether the people remember anything before arriving at Quindachim. The couple tell Deshim that they remember driving to their honeymoon before awakening. Deshim tells the couple he will be unable to answer any questions they may have and that they will begin to play a game, then proceeds to tell them it will be a game of roulette with their lives at stake. As the final rule, Deshim tells them until they play the game, they will be unable to leave the bar. The couple call him crazy and attempt to find an exit by looking around. After searching the bar and finding no such exit, they go back to the bartender and ask him to tell them where the exit is. Desim reveals a row of dead bodies behind him and tells them it's best for them to just play the game. He puts a button on the table and tells them to press it for what game they will play. The husband decides to press it, feeling that they will be playing a game of darts. Desim tells them darts are simple. You just have to hit the target. He then tells them that each part of the board is linked to a different body part that will inflict pain. The higher the amount you score, the higher the pain is induced on the other. The husband assures his wife that if it comes down to it, he will step in and fight the bartender. He decides to test the authenticity of the game and drills a dart into the part connected with the shoulder. The wife takes a turn and she lands it near the middle, inflicting a bad stomach pain on the man. Having confirmed their situation, the husband decides to rush the bartender, demanding for answers. The bartender tells him he has been telling him the truth the whole time. Desim tells the husband if he loses, then his wife will live and he will die. The husband decides to miss all of his darts on purpose so that he doesn't inflict any pain on his wife. He decides to do the same, but when the husband thinks about all the bodies he saw behind the wall, he rethinks letting her win. Before we continue, let's take a moment to answer the question of the day. Would you let your wife win knowing it's the right thing to do? Or would you fall into fear and attempt to win? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out in the next video. Back to the recap. He throws the dart down the middle, inflicting damage upon his wife, putting him in the lead. The wife then nails a double on him, causing his eyes to bleed. The husband then seems to take it personal, looking at the board, hoping to inflict pain. The wife then tells her husband that she is pregnant, which makes him rethink hitting the board. Still skeptical, the husband asks her why she never told him about their child. Instead of missing, he nails a double in the stomach area, causing his wife to be in intense pain. The husband remembers a memory he had overheard his wife talking about another man. His wife and her friend were overheard talking about how the wife cheated on him. The husband shouts at his wife unable to believe her innocence. The husband then asks Desim if there was a special rule. There are only being seven darts while two people. Desim then tells the husband that whoever's boards the dart hits is who it counts for. The husband walks over to the board preparing to throw the final dart and win the game, but his wife stops him. She explains that she didn't lie to him, he just didn't hear him out. The wife attempts to throw the final dart after stealing it from him, but he knocks her to the side. Whether it was intentional or not, the wife lands a bullseye to the middle, crowning her the victor. Essam announces that with that final dart, the wife has won. The husband pleads for a second chance, but Desham denies his request. The wife remembers how she died, being a car accident, and asks Desim if they are both already dead. He explains to her the purpose of Quindicum is to determine who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. The husband then remembers how they died and realizes what a mistake he made. 
trying to win. He falls to the ground and begs Dexim to bring him and his wife back. The husband shouts at his wife, knowing his fate, telling her that the child isn't his. The wife remembers all of the memories she had with him, and realizes what a mistake she made marrying him. The husband falls to the ground, looking exhausted from all his crying, thinking that he was in the wrong. The wife walks away and tells the husband that she is in fact in love with someone else. She tells the husband that she was only with the husband for his money, and he grabs some darts and rushes at her. Filled with rage, he attempts to stab her. Decim stops him in his tracks with strings, restraining him. The husband then dies right in front of the wife's eyes, and Decim tells her to follow him. With the husband stringed together in one elevator and a devastated wife in the other, the two go their separate ways. Episode 2 Waking up in a strange place, a woman is welcomed to the new place by someone named Nona. The woman attempts to introduce herself, but Nona tells her she can't because she has no name. Nona and the woman travel on a train with other people dressed like Nona. The woman asks where they are going to, which Nona tells them they will be arriving on the 15th floor. They arrive at the elevator to take them up and tell the doorman they are going to Deesim's floor. The doorman says hello to the woman, but they arrive before he can strike a conversation. The woman is amazed by how nice Decim's place is and is welcomed by Decim. The woman asks Nona where they are, and she explains this is the deceased place. She explains that people pass, then come here and play a game. Nona tells the woman that she is an arbiter, someone who passes judgment on the deceased. Nona tells the woman that they take certain memories and give them back as they play the game to heighten their true selves. Nona tells Dexim to get something ready, and then he tells the woman to follow her. The woman, still unsure of her role in all of this, asks Nona what her purpose is. Nona tells her she is an assistant, and they arrive in a strange room filled with dolls. The woman jumps back after being startled by the dolls to which Nona tells her to sit still. They sit in the back of the room and overlook the married couple before they play the game. The woman asks why they would play a death game if they knew they were dead. Nona then tells her that's why they take the memories of the deceased, so they will play the game heartfeltly. The woman asks Nona why they have to go to such extremes to pass judgment on the deceased. Nona tells her that they have to trick people into thinking it's all real to draw out the darkest part of their souls. Nona then asks the woman how she thinks they are able to draw out the worst of people. She tells the woman it's fear. Without fear, the people would take the game lightly. The two of them observe the couple play the dart game till the woman becomes disgusted. The woman becomes relieved once the couple starts missing on purpose, but then realizes the score is still intact. The lingering fear of what could happen if they lose causes the husband to intend intentionally strike the woman. Nona tells the woman over time they are able to clearly see people's true intentions and read past the lies. Nona then tells the woman that the way they died was because the husband distracted the wife on the road, blaming her for cheating on him. They continue to watch the couple play the game leading up to the husband hitting a double on the wife. Nona explains that through playing the game, they gradually regain more of their memories, making it much more authentic. When the wife eventually realizes they are both dead, it's too late. During the game, the art biters witness it all play out, giving them the final call. The Arbiter's role is to decide whether the soul reincarnates or is lost in the void. With the woman revealing she cheated on the husband and lied to him, it makes you wonder which one went to heaven and which to hell. After properly drawing out the deepest of emotions, Nona applauds Dekshim's work. The woman asks which soul was sent where to which he tells her the husband went to heaven and the wife to hell. The woman asks Dekim what if she only cheated one time and what if the baby was the husband's. She questions whether the judgment they pass is always correct, there being other possibilities for their grief. The woman asks Dakim what if the wife puts up an act to make the husband more angry. Dakim seems to not understand what kind of reason the wife would have to put up such an act. The woman tells Dakim that because of one big misunderstanding, they thought the other was wronging them. Desim realizes that he could have made a mistake. Nona tells him it's okay to make mistakes from time to time. The three eventually settle down and try some drinks prepared by Dechim. Nona tells the woman there is no one who puts more effort into making the perfect drinks other than Dechim. Nona then tells the woman it's her time to leave, so she leaves the woman with Dechim. As Nona rides the elevator down, she deducts that it was no mistake they fought. She says the husband was an untrusting person who could never find true happiness. Dechim apologizes to the woman for having misjudged the couple while preparing her another drink. Episode 3 Desim awakes his next guests, hoping to correctly judge their intentions this time. He guides the man to the bar where an attractive young lady, Dixim welcomes the two of them to Quindekim and asks if they remember anything before they arrived. The man tells Dixim he was on a bus, heading home from college while the woman says she can't remember. Dixim then proceeds to explain the rules of the game to the people. The woman puts up fingers and shouts out what rule number they are on. If you forgot the rules and tell them to play a death game ruling who lives and who doesn't, the man asks the woman if she's ready to play the game to which she explains 
explains she has lost her memories. She tells the man she has no clue who she even is and asks if he has any memories. He tells her he remembers a little, but including his name, but not how he ended up at the bar. The woman tells Desim because she has no memories, she has no choice but to play the game. The man agrees with her after finding no escape to the bar, and they press the roulette button. The button reveals that the two will be playing a game of bowl with their hearts inside the ball, with every bowl inflicting damage upon the other. The two proceed with caution, unknowing what will happen when they bowl. When the man attempts to grab the bowling ball, the heart within the ball beats, startling the man. Asim explains that the balls are linked to their pulses, telling whether they are nervous or not. The man grabs inside the ball and becomes comforted at the thought of grabbing her heart. He bowls, hitting eight points, but with the rules of the game, you are only allowed to bowl once. The man attempts to calm himself down, hoping to decrease his heart rate. The woman notices this and wonders if he is nervous. The woman throws her ball but only hits a few pins, falling short of the man's bowl. As she goes to sit down, he gets a glimpse of her flicking her hair, and he remembers a friend of his who used to do such. He gets distracted by this thought and ends up throwing a gutter ball, wasting his turn. The two continue to play the game, not fearing the outcome too much. As the end draws near, there is a clear difference in points making the women's victory seem impossible. The man walks closer to her and asks if she is having fun, despite not having her memories. She tells him it's been fun so far, but is surprised when he asks her out. The woman notices his heart within the bowling ball beating fast, which makes her happy. As she throws the ball, she remembers working at a bowling alley and seeing the man. She lands a strike during this memory, which puts her back in the game. The woman attempts to remember more about him, but is unable to until she bowls again. She bowls another strike, remembering hanging out with the man as a child. The two become friendly again, having not seen each other. And Desim says it's about to start. His assistant asks what will happen, to which he explains it discreetly to her. He says once they recall more of their memories, they will continue to feel more of the fear. The man attempts to roll a strike, hoping to keep his lead, him being a competitive person. After throwing his ball, he remembers his friends telling him a secret about the woman. He then remembers confronting the girl on a bus after gaining the courage to approach her. He then falls to the ground after throwing his ball and seems depressed for a moment. He eventually jumps up, acting like nothing is wrong and sitting back down on his seat. As the woman goes to bowl, she can see his heart beating super fast, making her wonder what's wrong. She goes to bowl, but after she throws her ball, she has a memory much like how he did. She remembers him talking to her and ends up hitting a gutter ball. Desim approaches them and tells them the game has ended and he has won. The man then realizes that he is already dead, so he tells Desim he doesn't need him to explain anything. Contrary to what we thought was going to happen, the man approaches her again, asking her for a date. He tells her they may be dead, but they are alive in the moment, can still make the most of their situation. The woman breaks down to tears and takes his hand, hoping to enjoy her last moment with him. They ask Desim if they have time for a date, tell them five minutes is enough. His assistant is able to convince Desim to give them more time for their date. The two go on to say their goodbyes at the elevator, hoping to both go to heaven. Desim later reveals that the woman is not actually the man's childhood friend or woman he has known. It is revealed the woman underwent surgery to appear better looking, hoping to impress the man and ended up looking like the girl he knew. Episode 4 this time, there appears to be a duo that isn't as nice as the last two. They search around the bar, hoping to find some kind of exit. The lady tells the man she has it figured out, and that they must be on a hidden TV show. The woman introduces herself as Misaki, and the man introduces himself as Yusuke. Misaki asks Yusuke if he recognizes her, and he asks if she was in some TV show he's seen. Misaki tells him that this must be a hidden TV show, and she asks him to work with her. She tells Yusuke that he needs to act oblivious to what's going on so that they get a better reaction out of them. The two press the button, thinking nothing of it, and realize they're doing an arcade game. Suddenly, the ground shifts, summoning an arcade game which surprises Misaki, wondering what the budget of the show is. As the two approach the game, the screen lights up, displaying Battle of Life. The assistant tells them it's time to play the game, to which the two do. Firstly, they have to choose a character, but are surprised to find it's only pictures of themselves. Yusuke becomes agitated after seeing the game display all of his negative personality effects, calling him an otaku. The two begin their battle, both hoping to emerge victorious. Datesim announces it's time to begin, and round one starts. Both still learning the attacks do a pretty bad job at displaying their skills. The otaku decimates the woman, having done nothing but play games during his life. He wins the fight, kowing Misaki, and this leads to Misaki having a bad headache. She recalls some of her memories, them all being unpleasant ones of her being abused. Misaki tells Yusuke to wait before he continues the game asking to let her win. She tells him it won't look good for the show if he wins every round. Yusuke decides to let her destroy her this time, getting him down to 1 GP without dealing much damage. Right before the woman is able to finish him off, Yusuke starts striking back. Before he can finish his ultimate combo, Desim presses a button on his remote, taking the ball of Yusuke's joystick. With no way to properly play the game, Yusuke 
Yusuke is defeated by Misaki. After losing, Yusuke experiences the same thing that Misaki did, getting a headache and recalling memories. Yusuke, like Misaki, recalls bad memories he had from his past. He reveals his parents neglected him and he was bullied at school. Misaki then pulls him to the side again and asks why he went off script. She tells him to let her win this time, her obviously being the main character. Yusuke, however, tells her that there's no way they are in a television show. Yusuke tells her he has no idea how he got there and knows unless he was kidnapped, he wouldn't be on a TV set. The two of them leave the bathroom and ask Daishin whether there are hidden cameras or not. Misaki demands him to tell her answers of what is going on, but stops when remembering the dolls behind the wall. She realizes that she has no chance against Yusuke, pleading for him to change the rules. Daishin tells her that she should know well enough that life isn't always fair. Misaki then sits back down at the game, devastated knowing she has no chance at victory. Yusuke continues to dominate the game until Misaki uses a special attack. She summons children to go and beat up Yusuke, which doesn't deal much damage, but it stuns Yusuke. Right when she attempts to go in for the attack, the ball falls off the thing much like how Yusuke's did. The assistant asks whether that's necessary, but stops when she witnesses Misaki slamming Yusuke's head into the machine. The assistant tells Daikim that they are pretty much forcing them to show their evil side, saying it's not right to do this to them. Misaki realizes what she has done after, but when she attempts to comfort Yusuke, she realizes it's too late. With his face covered in blood, Misaki pleads for Daichim to call an ambulance. Daichim replies, telling her to finish the game before they proceed. Misaki decides to follow Desim's suggestion by continuing to play the game. While Misaki finishes off Yusuke, he lays idly recalling one of his past memories. Hearing his mother's name call out to him, Yusuke awakes and starts fighting back. He uses an attack summoning his mom to throw stuff at Misaki. The two on one health point each attempt to finish the other off, knowing it's a life-changing game. Both of them remember past memories before their death. Misaki having slapped her assistant. With the both of them fighting their best, they end in a draw after simultaneously coing each other. Much like the others once they finish the game, they realize that they are already dead. Desim reveals that he is the judge of whether they go to heaven or hell, telling them the elevators they came out of will decide that. The woman rushes towards Dexim, blaming him for tricking her into attacking Yusuke. Before she is able to land a hit, Deshim ties her up with his strings, halting her in her path. She tells her story of always being deceived by people and ending up with five children. Yusuke, however, remembers his own fate, him having committed suicide. Having realized his situation, Yusuke breaks down in tears, wishing he hadn't left his mother so soon. Misaki, on the other hand, is still pleading for Desim to send her back and let her have a good life. Desim goes in to comfort the two of them, assuring them they won't go to hell. He sends the both of them in their respective elevators after seeing the truth hidden in their hearts. Episode 5 while getting ready, Desim's assistant notices a strange dress that she is unsure of how it got there. She arrives on Desim's floor in a gloomy mood and asks what he is doing. After observing Desim put up a new sign that decides what death game they are participating in, she asks if it's time for new guests. Desim tells her they will be arriving soon, then he receives the memories of the deceased. He tells his assistant not to go and greet them, something being off about the people arriving. Emerging from the elevator is a man and child, a man shouting at the child for bumping into him. He demands Dakim to tell him where he is, to which Desim welcomes him to Quindichim. The assistant goes and welcomes the child, urging him to take a seat at the bar. As usual, Dechim beings by asking the guests whether they have any memories before they arrived at the bar. They confirm that they haven't a clue how they got there, and the man tells Dechim he feels like he remembers being there. Desim tells him he understands and proceeds to the child, asking if he has any memories. Desim attempts to proceed with the game. The man and child both ask for refreshments first. Nona plays a game of pool with the planets in the Milky Way alongside another man. The man asks her how many years it's been since she took over. She tells him it has been 82 years. Nona then tells the man they have played close to 180 times every year since she took over. The man tells her he has a lot of free time, him being the closest to God among the Arbiters. Nona hits planets one at a time, eventually missing a shot on Saturn. The old man tells her it's okay to be nervous, but Nona says it was intentional. Going back to the man, he seems to remember something about Quindesim, and he falls to his feet. The man grabs some chopsticks and points it at the child's head, demanding them not to move. He tells Dexim he refuses to go through the game again, saying he'd rather die. The old man, however, tells Nona that he is surprised she has lasted as long as she has. He tells her he feels bad for Dekim, him having to constantly pass judgment upon people. During his explanation, he ends up missing a ball, giving Nona the chance for a comeback. Nona doesn't waste her chance and ends up defeating the old man. The man still holds the child, threatening Desim to release him or else. Desim, however, doesn't back down. 
showing him a string and explaining a story. Declam tells the man that it was a mistake to allow him back in Quindicham. Sim then strings the man up and prevents him from retaliating any further. To Dashim's surprise, when he turns around, he notices the kid looking down upon his unconscious assistant. Sim questions the kid, eventually being called out by name, forcing him to use his strings. The child attempts to run, but he is caught by Dashim's spider-like strings. The child then changes his voice and reveals himself to be a fellow arbiter named Ginti. Ginti asks Dekum if the girl is the one he was unable to pass judgment upon. Dashim then explains that he was unable to play the game with his assistant, having recalled her memories when she arrived in Quindicum. Ginty asks what she is doing in Quindicum, her being a human. Dashim tells him she assists with his judgment, giving human input to some cases. Ginty seems to have heard enough, so he fires water droplets at Dekim. After doing this, Ginty runs towards Dekim and attempts to retrain him, but is stopped by his strings. Ginty then recovers and rushes back to Dashim, but is put down by Nona. The doorman who works the elevator approaches and introduces himself as Clavis, fellow worker. Nona moves on with the topic and asks Dashim if he knows why she is there. Nona tells Dashim that his assistant has had too much of an influence on his decision. Nona tells Desim that he wasn't cautious enough, being distracted by the old man, letting the child put his assistant to sleep. Nona tells Desim he needs to always be on his guard and pass fair judgment upon the guests. Nona then decides to leave, telling Clavis to get her to the elevator. Before she can leave, Desim asks Nona what to do with the old man, who attacked the child to which she reveals it's a doll with human memories. Nona, having left Quindesim, arrives at a character named Castra's Domain. She asks Nona how the test on Desim went and realizes it didn't go well. Learn that Desim has been the arbiter for Floor 15 for the past five years, but still hasn't impressed Nona. Castra tells Nona that she should take her job more seriously and make her arbiters better at passing judgment. Going back to Ginty, he is still angered by Desim allowing his assistant to stay in Quindicium. Desim asks Clavis if he has any guests today, learns he has the day off. Desim carries his assistant to bed and leaves her to rest. The assistant remembers a woman telling the story of a boy named Jimmy, having the same face as the boy in the new poster Desim presently displayed. The story goes on talking about Jimmy having a good life, but being unable to convey his feelings to his loved one. Before the conclusion of the story erupts, the assistant wakes up realizing it was a dream. Episode 6 this time arriving at Quindicham is a young girl who thinks she is in a haunted house. As she continues to explore the area, she arrives at a bar serviced by Ginty. The girl asks if it's a bar and he tells her what else, urging her to take a seat. She notices tons of old dolls and asks if she can touch them, but he slaps her hand away. He then tells her she's going to play a game with the man behind her. He turns around and notices the man is Harada from something called Chiche. She reveals that she is a huge fan of whatever he does, introducing herself as Mayu. Arita then thanks Ginty for bringing the two of them together, asking why they they are there. Ginty pulls out the button and tells her to press the button. Mayu presses the button, and it reveals their game of choice, is Twister. Ginty then tells the two of them to follow her, and they walk to the where the game is. Harada asks Mayu if she has any recollection of how she got to this place, and she tells him no. He finds it suspicious that neither of them know what's going on, and are forced to play Twister. Harada asks her if she is nervous. She tells him she's excited to be able to play with him. Ginty tells the two of them he will explain the rules, but to start with taking their socks off. Ginty explains the rules of the game, each player having to put a body part on the selected color. The kitty presses the button, and Mayu starts with a hand on green. The two continue to play the game while Ginty reads a book waiting for it to be over. Harada peeks over towards Mayu's way, noticing her skirt revealing her underwear, which excites Mayu. While Mayu is in love with Harada, he reveals that he doesn't find Mayu attractive in the slightest. While the two continue to play Harada, is faced with putting his foot on the opposite side of the board, making him do a crazy maneuver to secure his spot. The two continue to play the game with Mayu, having the time of her life, while Harada just wants it to be over. Mayu becomes exhausted and asks Ginty for a break, but he tells them whoever loses will die. Mayu asks if it's just a joke to which Ginty presses a button making various objects around the room shift places. He tells the two the real game starts now, each of the colors inflicting pain on them. Mayu goes and is forced to press a red color making making the floor appear as lava. Next is Harada's turn, which lands on Green making an updraft from below. After being blown in the face and enjoying the breeze, Mayu is forced to switch over to the blue color. The blue color changed the playing field to frozen, making Harada unable to move to his next color. Mayu realizes the severity of her situation, but says it's not so bad being paired with Harada. To interrupt her thought, 
Harada cries out and breaks free from the ice, moving to his next color. Harada lands it on yellow and nothing happens at first. After a moment, the entire board, apart from the colors they are currently on, falls, revealing a pitfall. Ginty tells the two, this is the last test. Whoever falls dies, and whoever doesn't lives. Harada weighs his options and decides the only way for him to win is by pushing her off. While Harada is planning to push her off, Mayu innocently thinks about how she has to go to the bathroom, knowing she can't hold on much longer. Mayu tells Harada she will sacrifice herself. She tells Harada that whenever she was sad, his music always cheered her up, giving joy to her life. Mayu tells Harada that even though he was a womanizer, she still appreciated his music. It is revealed that one of Harada's fans committed suicide after being dumped by Harada. Mayu, having said enough, throws herself into the pit but is saved by Harada. Harada tells her that it's only because of people like Mayu that he was able to go as far as he did. Not having enough strength to hold her any longer, Arata tells her to come to a concert again in the future, dropping her to her death. As Mayu falls, she realizes that she died after slipping in the shower, causing her to feel embarrassed. Harada then realizes how he died, being killed by the sister of the girl he dated. Harada climbs back up to the top of the bar, but is stunned when Mayu emerges, dressed as a new woman. Ginty sits back and watches as the two who clearly passed the judgment test flirt with each other. Mayu!